What's up everybody? Tobin here, 5M Family Homestead Channel. If you're new to the channel, we appreciate you being here. If you would, do us a favor and hit that subscribe button. We'd really appreciate it. So this is gonna be a taxidermy video. If you're not into that kind of thing, we have plenty of other videos on our channel you might like, um, but we do own a part-time seasonal taxidermy business and uh, we do a few videos that are just primarily um, related to that and this is going to be one of those videos and the reason why we had something really really cool get dropped off at our shop a few days ago so i want to show you that and kind of take you through the process so this is what we got so that is two very big deer that are locked up so there's one here obviously and then the second one is right there These deer have probably been dead, according to the landowner, these deer came off of a high fence, which is a game, high fence uh, game ranch where um, the owner of the ranch had knowledge of these deer and knew that they were there, knew a lot about them, and then he said they just disappeared um, one day, and he was worried that maybe somebody had poached them and came in there and shot them or shot through the fence at them or something, and then they shot a deer uh, a few weeks ago, walked down in this little area looking for it he said he smelled could smell them and he found them locked up like that so they were fighting and they got locked up really good it's hard to see where they got locked up at but let me see if i can show you right here is where it all went wrong it was right there so this 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 fork right here went right up in over that main beam and that, that those deer would have never came apart unless this broke right here. And that's a pretty big uh, time to break. All right, y'all, so this video is gonna be over uh, several weeks, maybe over a couple months. So what I'm gonna do first is, I do fear that once I start removing that hide, that those horns might shift a little bit and that they could come apart. So what I'm gonna do to prevent that is I'm gonna zip tie it all together with plenty of zip ties and that way once i get all that hide removed and we start whitening them there's no chance that they're going to come apart and i'll probably when i get done take the zip ties off to take some pictures and then i'm going to put zip ties back on it until i give it to the customer that way there's no issue with that so those heads are like like leather that skin has dried and dried and dried and there's no way I'm gonna be able to skin it and get it off. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna submerge it just like it is in a tub of water, and I'm gonna probably leave it there for a week or two. And then once it gets real good and hydrated, the nasty part will happen. I'm gonna pull them out of there and skin as much off there as I can, and then probably go back into some more water with them for a, another a period of time. Um, and then, We'll go through a little degreasing and some soap and water, and then we'll whiten them with uh, some cream peroxide. So that's gonna be the best way to do it. So that's the plan. So um, I'm not gonna show y'all put it in the water and stuff. Y'all know, can figure out how to do that, but uh, we'll, we'll pick back up uh, when we get a little further in the process and we'll see y'all then. All right, everybody. So it's three weeks down the road. I don't know, maybe more, maybe less, but uh, those heads have been soaking skin on uh, for at least a few weeks. Pulled them out earlier, and um, I think they're ready to try to get the skin off of them. It's nasty. Um, so I'm gonna do that now. It goes without saying, be careful. Um, you know, if you were cutting on that deer and stabbed yourself, um, it might be bad for you. So I'm filming back here, back here behind the uh, shop because we, we're bulling a bunch of other heads and have other stuff going on up, uh, up there in the front. So take y'all around there, and we'll start skinning those heads and see what they look like. We can get all the skin off of them, and we're gonna start uh, bowling with today. So let's go see what happens.
All right, that skin came off there really, really well. Um, got, I'd say I got probably 80 to 90 percent of the hide off of it. There's still some of the stuff on the back of the head that's kind of stuck on there. Um, I suspect once we I simmer it and boil it for a couple hours, it will uh, all that will get loose enough I can knock it off with the power washer. Uh, so that's what we're gonna do. We got it in that pot. It fit in the pot perfectly. We were I was worried it wouldn't, but it did. Uh, put a, about a half a bottle to a bottle of uh, ivory soap in there with it. Gonna simmer it, boil it. I don't want to boil it. Um, I don't want a full blown boil it. Those heads are a little more fragile because they've set out and started to deteriorate. Uh, so definitely uh, simmer to maybe it's a really light boil uh, for a few hours, take it out here with power washer, and then we'll see what it looks like. Got all the flesh power washed off of it. I'd say I've got 99.5% of it uh, off. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fill up another pot with clean water with no, probably, I guess I could put soap in there. I may, may not, it doesn't really matter. But I'm just gonna go kind of to, to further degrease it. I'm gonna go through and uh, put it in a pot, clean water for probably, I don't know why I'm here working another hour or so and then take it out and then we'll wipe it. So I am very glad that I zip tied it together because once, as I suspected, once that flesh uh, was gone, everything started to shift. Even the zip ties got loose, so I had to tighten them up. All right, y'all, time to whiten. My wife is the resident whitening expert for the family. <laughs> so she's already got them kind of prepped. You can tell she, uh, that's good thinking, babe. Well, that's the only spot the horns touch the right here. Yeah. I'm gonna have to try to get like up underneath there without it hitting the horns or anything. Yeah. It's that's still gonna be gonna hard, be but we, we can go back and recolor them if we have to. So we have a whitening video that we put out recently. Uh, we have some older whitening videos of an older process we use. We have a newer whitening video showing the process my wife's doing right now. Uh, cream and powder and um, it's pretty cut and dry. So same thing on these. Um, our old process wouldn't even work on these because we'd have to, um, the old process we would submerge them in liquid peroxide. So so she's gonna do that. Um, we've got some, we've been, this isn't the only animal we're working on. We've got, Got pigs, black buck, fallow, elk. Yeah, so these are the last ones we're doing. So we will, uh, we're gonna put that whitener on there, put them out in the sun for the rest of the day today, probably all day tomorrow, and then she'll probably white, uh, wash them off, um, you know, probably two days from now. Um, yeah. So may, may have to leave it on these a little bit longer because they, when that hide dries and the blood's in there, it, um, that blood stains the bone. And these look pretty several, good. Do I? It takes several rounds of whitener when that happens. Yes. Sometimes. These don't look too bad, but, we'll all, but I think also soaking them in the water for two, three, four weeks, however long you it was. How long we did it for? One month. A month? Okay. I saw one month. Okay. Yeah, I wasn't sure exactly, but that also drew some of that, um, the fat and the, the blood and stuff out of there as well. So. Uh -oh. Is the name of the game with these things. I also don't want to move them too much and then because they once their hide came off they are very very movable. Yes. I, and the last thing I want to do is these two to come apart. So yeah well. Just go slow. Yeah. We'll uh I was telling them earlier we'll cut the zip ties off probably to take pictures and then I wouldn't. Um, I really wouldn't. I would give. I think we should give it to him with the zip ties yeah. and let it go to its final destination <laughs> and then unzip. Yeah. It. Well, I'm a little more daring. I, I figured we would take, take him outside and cut him and leave it just laying right where it's at, and then. I think so. that's. I think that's a terrible idea. <laughs> I would be scared because they're pretty loose right now. As you can tell we don't always agree on things here. Yeah, I don't know. We're gonna do something. I just want to get a good video, a good picture of them after we're done. So you probably won't even. You could cut the zip ties at the 
Well, I bet you couldn't even tell they were there. Yeah, they would just leave one. Yeah. At, at strategic like, place, the one like down at the base or something. I was thinking that yeah. one. That one seems to be the one that's the most yeah. iffy. It's interesting because going into this one, I felt very nervous about it. And to be honest, this has been one of the easier, this process, these have been easier to do than a regular deer. And I don't know why. Yeah. Same thing. I mean, we have, uh, on our channel last year, we did a video on deadheads. We got in, uh, several deadheads last year and, uh, same process that we did on these. Um, it's pretty easy. I mean, you just, um, soak them in water and just, it takes a lot of time and then it smells horrendous. Oh, my. And then, uh, when you, you just got to kind of skin them, but they're, they're kind of not that hard to skin once you pull them out of the water and then, um, then it's just degreased them and whiten them. It's like a fancier maceration process. Yeah. Alright, see y'all in a couple days. I have a feeling that corn's gonna... We'll catch up with y'all in a day or two, hopefully when they're completely finished, and we'll see what they look like. Alright y'all, give y'all a little update on the whitening these heads. So we had the whitener on them for about a day and a half, almost two days. Uh, my wife took uh, the heads out along with some other ones today and rinsed them off. And as to be expected with a dead head, these heads were still a little yellow. Um, so she wanted to put them back, put the whitener back on them and go one more round with them. So let me show you. Now compared to how they were, I can tell you they're a lot more white. But I will tell you this, I try to tell every customer that brings me a dead head or a head that they've left out with the skin on it, like left in their garage or in the back of their truck or something, I try to tell them and give them a warning, it may not get as white as a normal head that you kept fresh. The reason it will not get as white is because the second that that head starts to dry out, whether it's a dead head or one that somebody left out, that blood begins to seep into the bone and stain that bone and there is not much you can do about it our older whitening process that we used would be good for a situation like this because the liquid peroxide will get deeper into the bone but we, it would be impossible to put these heads in the liquid peroxide with them locked together like they are so we just went one more round we're probably going to leave it on there for 24 hours maybe 48 hours wash it off and that's going to be it that being said We'll see you in a day or two. We're going to wash them off um, the final time, uh, do any touch up on the horns we need to do, and then we're going to be done with them. And on, on a project like this, I'm going to get some good pictures, some good video, um, uh, before and after stuff, and have lots of, this will be a good um, piece to, um, to display you know on social media and things like that um, people I hope that it will be well received I hope this video will be well received also so see you on a couple days after it's rinsed off and we'll see what it looks like all right everybody the day has come heads are finished need to uh, call the customer tell them to come pick them up let me turn the camera around here and show you what they look like Alright y'all, so we can see how those skulls look. To me, um, I, I'm super, super happy with how this mount came out. I mean, just an awesome project to work on. Honored that um, this gentleman uh, you know, chose us to do this. These are some important animals to him. And, um, you know, now they can live on forever in his, you know, in his, uh, lodge or cabin or wherever he wants to put them. And, um, 
you know, remember them forever. Guys, I hope y'all liked this video. Um, if you did, please do us a huge favor. Hit the, the thumbs up button, hit that subscribe button, ring the notification bell so you get notified when we put videos out. We uh, don't always do taxidermy videos like this, but this is a big part of our, um, our, our homestead and, and our lives, so we do put some in there occasionally. Hope y'all liked it. Uh, this is a rare thing to get to do. Um, I would love to do more of them. Again, I'm super happy with how they came out, the process. Uh, thank y'all so much. Uh, thank you for all the support, and we'll see y'all again.